Redskins look for answers following their latest rendezvous with rock bottom. What on earth happened yesterday, both on the field and off of it? How do the Redskins write the ship and your calls as well? It is all tonight on After the Game with Darrell Young. Live from News Channel 8, this is After the Game with Darrell Young. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Alex Parker with Jarrell Young. It is after the game with Jarrell Young. D.Y., how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. I don't, I'm running <laughs> out of questions. Um, well, how I'm do you describe? I know. <laughs> how do you describe as we sit tonight? You've had 24 hours-ish to digest it. What happened? Um, we didn't take advantage of anything, you know. Um, Looking back at the past three weeks in terms of games and stuff like that, looking back at San Francisco, Indianapolis, even yesterday, teams have given, given us an opportunity early on to, you know, capitalize with, you know, uh, San Francisco and Indy, Indy with the uh, turnovers. And now, you know, yesterday with the missed field goals and the extra point, how many times does a kicker miss that many, you know, in the first quarter or the first half? And so shorties, too. It's frustrating. But, um, you know, as a competitor, I'm going to go out there and approach the game like I do every week. Um, you know, I'm going to go into Wednesday. I'm going to game plan. You know, we watched the film today. You try to put it behind you. You have to have a short-term memory. But at the end of the day you know you have to address what's going on and that's what it will be addressed Wednesday and you know you heard you call, I heard coach Gruden say some things will you know be, uh, be ha will have to change you know and uh, this week what is watching the film like is the entire team watch it in mass is it broken up by groups you film doesn't lie film does not lie <laughs> so what is um, that like special teams I mean you know, we break down into the special teams unit, so we watched the core four, and Tavon Austin basically did what, you know, Dwayne Harris did to us last year when we played the Cowboys. And, um, you know, offense and defense, you know, we'll break up into pos uh, position groups and, you know, kind of break up the film like that. And, you know, the offensive coordinator will address the offense and, you know, go from there with things. Um, preparation heading into last week. And, frankly, these last five weeks, lost five games straight. Are you seeing what you need to see during the week and then the Sunday is sort of a surprise? Do you get any inkling heading into these games that you guys are in some sort of trouble? I'm excited going into every week just because I feel like the coaches give us a game plan, you know, to be successful. And I think uh, it's a lack of ex execution on the field and stuff. So I think uh, it's on us as players to kind of, you know, just be better, you know. The coaches can't do anything about us holding on the field or jumping off sides. They can only, you know, call a play into the huddle. So it's about execution at this point, you know, from, from a player standpoint. And we just got to be better, you know. Like I said, I don't, I don't ever feel like we're out of a game, you know. We have a chance to finish 4-2 in the division right now. That's a positive thing, looking forward to things and hopefully spoil something for maybe the Cowboys or the Eagles. 703-387-1020 uh, is our lawn and leisure hotline. If you want to talk with D.Y., uh, give us a call. D.Y., before we get to the nuts and bolts of, of the game, <laughs> With the Redskins, there's usually games before games even start. And yesterday was no different. Uh, the, the coin toss, you're one of the captains. You go out there, and I don't realize it until after the game, that Jeff Fisher has sent out the six players that they still have from the trade for Robert. And this seems to me like a gotcha. This seems to me like a poking the bear. When did you realize that these six guys were those six guys? I didn't realize it till last night, you know, and I was pulling on with the dinner last night, and, you know, his brother had said something about it, and uh, that's when I realized it. But, I mean, it's still six and seven at this point. It's not like, they, you know, they're playing for, you know, Super Bowl spot right now on top of the division. I mean, they still have a chance to make the playoffs, but, you know, they're not really winning in that situation so far. But, um, you know, I thought at first my initial reaction, I was, you know, I felt disrespected because I know Robert. But then again, they say Jeff, Jeff Fisher does that, you know, in terms of, you know, making an honorary captain because of the situation, like going back to Cortland Finnegan when they played Tennessee and stuff like that. So I see why he did it. That, I may not agree with that, but hey, he did it and they backed it up and they won the game. So what can I say about it? Um, does it still bother you? I and mean, that was sort of a, I don't want to call it a cheap shot, but that was a, they stuck it to you. No. If you win the game, we're not talking about this. You guys yeah. would have stuck it to them. They won the football game. Yeah, it doesn't bother me because, like I said, you know, they, they they did it, you know, whatever, and they won the game. So what can I do about it? You know, I, of course, I'm going to be frustrated at the situation, but at the end of the day, I can't do anything about it. And, you know, like I said, I know Jeff Fisher is a classy guy. He's not one of those coaches who's, you know, disrespectful in terms of the media and stuff. I don't know how he is as a coach, you know, behind the scenes. But, you know, to the media, I've never known him as a guy that, you know, is basically going to, you know, disrespect someone to, in their faces. The other pregame story, um, which with the Redskins every Sunday at about noon, you can rest assured while this losing continues, there will be more of this drama the London Fletcher situation and, and London was very vocal and passionate and adamant that Jim Hazlitt isn't good at what he does. We heard about it in the press box before kickoff. 
did you hear about it before the game, or did players not know about it? No, I didn't know about it until after the game. Okay. Uh, what do you make of what London said? Um, it's frustrating because I played with London, and I know what type of guy he is. But at the same time, he has, he's entitled to an opinion. He's a guy that played for Jim Hazlitt. I never played for Hazlitt, you know, but I'm going to support the coach because I've seen what he's done in terms of this defense being ranked high, on, you know, high in this season. So even this season, we were ranked pretty high before, you know, we started doing some things and letting up some big plays and stuff like that. But four or five plays separated that game yesterday, you know, from a defensive standpoint because they, they've done a great job offensively. We've, had put, we've, we've put them in situations all season long where they haven't, you know, where we haven't taken advantage or helped the defense at all. So uh, from that standpoint, like I said, London Fletcher is a guy who's well-respected around here. He was a longtime Redskin guy who's won a Super Bowl, knows what it takes to, you know, basically get to the next level in terms of winning and stuff like that. He's entitled to an opinion. And, you know, I still love Fletch, but, you know, I'm sure, you know, Hazlitt feels a certain way about it. But, you know, like you said, everyone's entitled to an opinion. And, you know, what can you do about it? Uh, D.Y. is here after the game with D.Y. 703 uh, 387-1020 is our lawn and leisure hotline. Uh, Todd is in Suitland, Maryland tonight. Hi, Todd. How are you? Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for taking my call. It'd be greatly appreciated. Sure. What's up? Uh, Mr. Mr. Darrell, what in the world happened yesterday? You know, that was, I was like, good gosh. You know, I know that you guys are trying to make things better and do whatnot, but somebody was clearly sleeping at the switch. You know, I know you guys are trying to do what you got to do to make things better, but it just seems like it's like a, it's like a gruesome horror story. Is uh, there any possible way that, that Mr. Allen can kind of and broaden the horizons and wake, wake the coaching staff up, or, or am I not going in the right direction? And thank you for my call. Uh, Todd and Suitlin, thank you so much. A lot of stuff there. A, we talked about what happened. It's hard to sort of put it into words. We watched it. Um, do you expect some sort of shakeup, whether it be before the end of this season or in the offseason heading into next year in terms of structure? I don't know what's going to happen, but I know, you know, Jay Gruden's the head coach, and I know he'll put us in a situation. Now I do know for this week it will be, it will be a more competitive crack, uh, practice in terms of the schedule and stuff like that. We might do more ones versus ones, you know, in practice to kind of not say get a better look, but not to rely on cards and guys to be out of position and stuff like that because at the end of the day it's a copycat league, you know. Everyone does what everyone does on, you know, nick and nickel situations. So um, from that standpoint, I mean, we just got to challenge each other now. I mean, it's not about, you know, anyone stepping up and saying anything. We got to stop talking. We've been talking for weeks about what we need to do to fix the situation or you know just in terms of addressing everything we just have to play football and we have to go back to having fun you know which we said a couple times on the show now but you know I really believe that guys aren't having fun obviously you're not having fun when you're losing but you know we just have to find a way to have fun you know there's reports about us having too much fun in the locker room maybe we need to carry that over to the field so you know we'll see 24 nothing there wasn't much to cheer about there was nothing to cheer about for local fans uh, how much do you notice the fans? I mean, they're booing. A lot of them don't show up. Uh, they're sort of forlorn. They're, you know what it is. It's this is what it is. Uh, how much does this affect you guys? How much do you notice? Or are you just thinking between the white lines and this is separate? Well, we want to please our fans, you know, in any situation that we can. So, you know, it's frustrating to know that, you know, they're booing us, but they're booing us because we're not, you know, we're not. We're not winning games, you know. We can't do anything about that. So they're entitled. They're paying to come see a team win a game, and we're not doing that. And you know, on paper, you would say, "Hey, that's just the St. Louis Rams." But you look at you know Oakland and San Francisco yesterday. The game's played on the field, you know. So we have to be better for our fans. We have to, you know, just I don't even know, man. We just gotta have some fun. I don't know how we do it though from this point. Seven zero three three eight seven ten twenty is our lawn and leisure hotline. When we come back. We'll talk about the quarterback situation. Uh, Colt McCoy hurt. Can he go at New York? And if he can't, it looks like it would be RG3. I'll talk with DY about that. And callers, take note if you get through on our lawn and leisure hotline, you can win a big green egg. There's the actual egg that you will win. Do some grilling, do some smoking with this bad boy. Go to WJLA.com, all the details. You can win that big green egg. More with DY on the quarterback issue after this.
Here is your injury report brought to you by the Cochran Law Firm. Quarterback Colt McCoy left the game after getting sacked six times, uh, hurt his neck. Gruden says it's a neck sprain. Colt is still getting tests, still being evaluated. Gruden says he's not sure whether Colt can play next week or not. Running back Roy Hallou, toe injury, left the game. Gruden says today, quote, it's probably going to keep him out a week. That is your Cochran Law Firm injury report. Welcome back to After the Game with Joel Young. I'm Alex Parker. He, of course, is D.Y. Uh, Colt McCoy had that great game at Dallas, but I think as we see in this league, the more tape you put out there, the more teams know what to do to counter you. What would you make of Colt yesterday? I thought he would put us in a good situation. You know, we didn't run the ball well enough for him to throw the ball, you know, to have those amazing stats. So, uh, I mean, I don't know how many yards Alfred had or how many attempts, but, you know, from a fullback standpoint and everything else, I mean, I didn't do a good enough job blocking for him. Um, you know, we just we didn't do anything in the run game, and that's always going to hurt your, play, your pass game. We really couldn't do the play-action game that we wanted because they, they weren't going to respect it because their front four did a great job, you know, stopping the run. So, um, you know, I, I thought he did a great job. Alfred had uh, eight carries for six yards, which has got to be a career low, obviously, for Alfred. Um, you're a guy. You, you get paid to, to block for him. Uh, I'm going to guess you weren't in as much yesterday as you would have liked to have been. Uh, do you, can you say to Coach um, or Sean, hey, I think we can run the football, put me in, or once a game plan is installed, that's their deal on you and, and you don't – do you have input during a game, you or other players? During a game, no. <laughs> you know, but um, leading into the game, you know, I can say, hey, I can help sit, help in situations like this. But that's what they see on film. That's how they address, you know, going into every game. So, um, you know, I, like I said, I'm a fullback. You know, I just line up in eye formation, strong or weak. You know, it doesn't matter. So, you know, I can't control my role right now. My role is to be a special teams guy yesterday. And I didn't perform well enough at that. So, I have to address, you know, what my role is first before I can, you know, get, uh, go out there and, you know, question the coaches what they're doing in the running game or how to improve the offense and stuff like that. Uh, Robert got in at the end of the game, the final two minutes after Colt got hurt. I think a lot of folks thought he was done playing here in D.C. He's He was back yesterday. He may be back this week if Colt can't go. Um, are you ready for another week of quarterback drama? Because now we're there again. <laughs> I mean, that's what it seems like. But you know what? Hey, like I said from the jump, all three of those guys, I'm, whoever's on the center, you know, I'm going to go with because I respect all three of those guys as players, people, and you know what they do in terms of uh, what they bring to the table. So um, I'm excited for any of those guys. You know, I, I wish Colt the best. I don't want him to be hurt. I hope you know, hope he can play because I never want to see a guy you know not play because of injury and stuff like that. But uh, all three of those guys have won in this league and they've you know given us a, a chance to win at some point in the season. Uh, Frank is in Laurel, Maryland tonight on our lawn and leisure hotline. Hi, Frank. What's up? Hi, man. I want to. You know, it's a very sad day where you have all them turnovers and y'all can't capitalize. I mean. I just think that we all need to get back to whole hog football, tackle low, and you learn from my boy uh, London Fletcher. He's a beast, and I think um, I think we need to put uh, b uh, my boy cousin in. I, I would put my, my boy cousin in and give him. I mean, what's going to hurt? Okay. I mean, I think it. Uh, I think RG three would be a good quarterback somewhere, but I don't really think he's he'd be for us. I really don't. Thank you, Frank and Laurel. Frank's got a couple of boys. He's got his boy, London Fletcher. He's got his boy, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> Kirk's like the forgotten fellow here. And I think a lot of Redskins fans think that, that he still has a bright future ahead of him as well. He does, but I do have to correct Frank. It wasn't turnovers yesterday. It was field goals. Missed. It was missed field goals. But, um, you know, like I said, all three of those guys have given us a chance to win at some point in the season. And we just weren't able to take advantage of the situation. And like you said, Kirk Cousins, all those guys will be great quarterbacks here or somewhere else, regardless of where we end up, you know. So, um, I mean, hey, Frank's right. We need to get back to the old football. And well, obviously we can't tackle people right because we're not stopping anyone. We can't block anyone right because we're not blocking anyone right. So, I mean, we got to do something. And, you know, Frank may be right on this one. Uh, we sort of talked about rock bottom. And, of course, you're at rock bottom. And then if you lose next week, then what is that? That's like a rocky or bottom. <laughs> You've been here for a few years, D.Y. You've lived these ebbs and flows. Is this as low as it's been since you've been here? I feel like that just because uh, – I'm living it right now. You know, I can't. Last year was pretty bad too, but um, this year, I mean, maybe because it's the present time right now. You know, I just, I just don't understand. I have no answers. After the game, you know, I, I talked to some media outlets, and you know, they were asking me some questions. I just said this might be the first time that I'm speechless in any situation uh, coming out of a game in terms of what we can do. You know, to prepare for next week or to be better because I've said everything. We've addressed everything over the past couple of weeks. Um, so I, I had nothing to say, and you know, we just got to go win a game and hopefully, you know, change the opinions of people. 
703-387-1020, our lawn and leisure hotline. Uh, we will get back to the phones. we got to do a break. There was a player of the game uh, yesterday. You might know who it is. Uh, we'll talk with D.Y. about that and more after this on After the Game with Terrell Young. Don't go away. I'll throw it to Bob. Here is our Norman D. Carpenter player of the game. Ryan Kager was impactful against the Rams. He had five tackles and two sacks. He really was a pest for the St. Louis O-line. So this week, we congratulate Ryan Kerrigan as our Norman D. Carpenter player of the game. Ryan Kerrigan, D.Y., this guy just keeps going and going. He also appears to be, you know him a lot better than we do, like the nicest man in North America. I call him a gentle giant. Yeah. He's the, the shyest human being you'll ever soft meet. Soft-spoken. Yeah, soft-spoken. <laughs> Ward is locker this morning trying to get him to say something about London Fletcher. Um, I just think it's, uh, I think it's uh, what it is. I mean, he's like the <laughs> nicest, softest-spoken, softest-spoken, wreaking havoc <laughs> fellow on the face of the earth. What a player he I is. Just, I'm just glad people can see that when he beats me in training camp, that I'm not, I'm not really that bad of a player. You know, he's really that good of a player. So. And the guns on him. <laughs> he's a, he's a mouse. He's a monster. 703-387-1020, uh, our lawn and leisure hotline. Our man Bob is in Gaithersburg tonight. Hi, Bob. How are you? Pretty good, Alex. D.Y., keep the faith. I love the Redskins. <laughs> Don't lose it, buddy. I <laughs> got you. Keep it in your heart. Thank you. Uh, what I got to say is um, Colt McCoy's out. RG3, he's a good kid. I love him. But mentally, he isn't there. Physically, I think he's a little gun-shy, which makes him hesitate on passes. Our best bet to win is uh, Cousins. Offensive line, you guys need to work on the blocking sled, and Alfred <laughs> Morris needs to work on blocking technique. Okay. And D.Y., I love you, but you too, buddy. <laughs> Uh, Thank you, Bob. We gotta let you go, boss. I've we got a lot of folks that on the Lawn and Leisure Hotline. They want to win that big green egg. It's the second week in a row. Bob has referenced the blocking sled. You know what? Alfred's one of those guys who you can't do anything when you get a tackle for a loss when a guy tackles you before the ball's handed off one. Two, I respect what he's saying about the blocking sets because, hey, hey, maybe he sees something that we don't see. Three, he switched quarterbacks every week. So I, I, Every week he switched quarterbacks. So okay. I respect him. I love him, but he switched quarterbacks every week. So he's got to pick one that's best for the team. Bob's got Danny Warfel <laughs> playing in two weeks against the Eagles. Uh, Steve is in Washington, Virginia tonight. Hi, Steve. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you're on, my man. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. Uh, I just think that uh, the guys, I don't know if they're they're laying down or what's going on, but uh, you know, I've always seen a lot of pride and in, in with the Redskins, and it just seems like it's not there right now. And I know times are tough, and 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 they're not doing real good, but I know they can do better, and I got a lot of faith in them. Okay, thank you, Steve. Uh, guys laying down. I like Steve. You like Steve? I like Steve. Um, does this team have this sort of fire and um, teamness quality that teams that win win have? Does it have enough of that? It couldn't, or else it would be winning. I think where we're going with this thing, guys, you have to have pride as a player because if you dress up in that uniform and you go out in front of, you know, however many 60,000 people were in the stadium yesterday, if you go out in front of those people and basically lay down, you're going to get yourself hurt. You're going to put yourself in a situation where, you, you know, right now we're playing for next year. We're playing for our jobs. We're playing for our careers. We're playing for our families, the name on your back, front and back. You know, um, I think – I don't think anyone's laying down, but I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. It's hard every day to go to work in a sense where we know we're out of the playoffs because there's one common goal that every team wants to reach. Um, but it's hard. But at the end of the day, as a competitor, as a person who, you know, always thinks that there's a plan, there's something in the future for what you do, um, I'm excited about what, what can happen from here. Obviously, I can't say that because we're a three and, football, uh, three and ten football team, but I'm also one of those guys who, you know, I, I look at myself as a leader. It may not be, but I, as, to myself, I'm a leader, you know, and I have fun out there, and I'm going to try to, you know, basically 
you know, piggyback off the guys who are, you know, doing the positive things. And I'm going to try to, you know, you know, put a, you know, just emphasize the little things on the guys who are younger who don't know what this is like because they've been in a winning program. And, you know, just to try to change things around. And, hey, this is what you do when you're in a situation. You still play. You know, you still play for your pride, your family, everything that you, you know, the little things that make you successful and uh, got you where you are today. We will have more with Darrell after this. We will look ahead to the Giants game for DY. That's a homecoming game after this. Don't go away. Welcome back to After the Game with Terrell Young. Uh, quickly to the phones. Connie is in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Hi, Connie. Hi. You're on. We got about 30 seconds. Well, I. Oh, she doesn't know how to play. Connie doesn't know how to play the game. Hi. Hi. Connie, we got to look. Go ahead, Connie. I just want to say that I think things are hard work. Okay, Connie, we got to let you go. Uh, folks, if you do get in on the Lawn and Leisure Hotline, turn your TV down. If we talk on the phone, we don't do the delay. Connie's about five seconds behind the rest of us in the state of Virginia right now. Uh, D.Y., <laughs> you're going back to the Meadowlands this week. I am. That's homecoming, homecoming for you. Homecoming. A couple years ago, you had a big game up there. I did, I think. I remember that one. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, it, it, as much as you want to say this week, should somebody stick a microphone in your face at your locker, like this means extra, and you, you always say, oh, no, it's just whatever. This means extra, right? It does because I worked out with the Giants coming out, and you know, I was a linebacker, then, and they didn't give me a chance. So it's always going to be that grudge in the back, you know, in my mind right there, just in terms of them not giving me an opportunity to play in the NFL and saying I'm too short, I'm not fast enough. And, you know, last time I checked, I weighed more than all the linebackers, and I'm, I think I'm almost fast than all of them. But, you know, whatever. Hey, like I said, it's a homecoming for me. You know, family will be there, and, you know, it'll be exciting. D.Y., all the best. Appreciate it. If you win a game, all the drama stops. Not all of it, but some Most of it. <laughs> if you don't, we'll be having this again next week. Thanks for watching. 9 o'clock for Toyota Sports Talk. See you then.